What is up, everybody? It's me, Duke Farley, back at it again here on Lost at Sea. And tonight, we are talking about episode two of Ascendance Live, season four. And I am joined by a special guest. You may have recognized her from when she was in, you know, season three last season. A couple of times on the podcast with a couple of interviews. I'm here with Kira. Kira, how are you? I'm fantastic. It's a new season, a new day, and a new dawn of the game. With a new exciting twist. I can't wait to get into it. Can't wait to get into it. And what a great episode to have you on to talk about all the good stuff that just happened. Um, a lot of tears were shed this episode, but yeah. only one person went home. There was speculation last episode where uh, with Ali that maybe we would see two people go. Mm-hmm. But Blaker is the first person eliminated from the game. Um it seemed like the the two names that were out there towards the end um, were, you know, Billy versus Blaker. What did you think of the decision of the people that were vulnerable and that were voting here? Did you see these two people being the targets here? No, not at all. So, like, after last episode, like, I, I was just curious of, like, the dynamics on the teams. And kind of like you were saying, I wasn't sure if it was going to be, like, two teams going to uh, um, elimination and one from each team has to go, or maybe it's, you know, um, everyone together. We find out that it's one person um, from both teams and the captains included are going to be voting, but they have safety, right? Um, I thought that uh, out of the two teams, I think I was kind of leaning towards maybe Grace and Stacy being maybe some of the outliers off of what we saw in the last episode. So to hear that this episode or this episode, the season, this cast is like getting nitty gritty to it and trying to take out some big names. Um, very exciting. Very exciting. Very exciting. It seems like um, Billy's name was something that one of the husbands, Matt, was mm-hmm. kind of foaming at the mouth for, you know, he wanted... Matt seems a little threatened by season three. I don't know what it is, but he's he's threatened. I don't know. And, and it's so interesting, their dynamic, because I don't think Jim, Jim knows the page that uh, Matt is on, but isn't writing on the same page. You know what I mean? Like he, he kind of wants to work with Grace and Billy by proxy. Yeah. And they vote differently this way. Matt is on, he put, puts his vote on Billy and Jim goes with um, the majority here and votes out Blaker. I thought it was right. so fun, the conversation they had um, during when the, the mayhem was happening, um, kind of Matt telling Jim what he was feeling and vice versa. Um, but it seems like uh, just the numbers were not there to get Billy this time. Are, are you surprised? Because it seemed like there was a couple of people, you know, even Josh and Adam, Kind of maybe would have done it. Were you or were you yeah. surprised that it went this way? Um, I'm not surprised that Adam and Josh would have been behind it. Um, I am surprised that Josh didn't. I also thought that there might be like some funny poetic justice if and I know he would never do this, but if like Josh gave Billy his idol just because of like the shenanigans that happened last season. Um, that would have been good TV, Kira. That would have been I good know, TV. Been great TV. Uh, if only, right? Next time, Josh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I didn't see it coming. I definitely was surprised by it. But to be honest with you, um, as much as I think Blaker was going to be a huge piece in this game, I think they're smart to keep Billy for a little bit, especially like the season three people. The longer you can keep Billy in, the less it's because people are already looking at Billy. If I'm one of the season three people that's in there right now, I want Billy to stay around just because he's going to take heat off of me. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I think that ultimately that's probably what those, those two decided on. And it seems like there were enough people in Billy's corner where it really wasn't going to be um, too difficult for him to kind of get out of this situation. Um, right. I, I think it's interesting though. I think Adam still voted for Billy. Was that, were there four votes on Billy here or was there three? Four, I think it was four votes. I was trying to hear the votes at the end when they show, um, you know, who voted and what their reasonings were. I yeah. didn't hear a lot of it, but I'm pretty sure I think uh, Adam said so. Uh, someone correct me. Let us know in the comments. 
let us know in the comments. I, I, I was, I thought there was either four or three votes and I didn't hear exactly what Adam said, but, yeah. um, if it, if he did vote that way, that, that is also interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, Billy is going to be heading back into this house with four people having written, wrote his name down. One of them's now gone, but right. do you think he'll get over that? No, <laughs> it's Billy. He's, I think if Billy's smart, he's going to like try to come back and be like, oh, oh, guys, no problem, Mark, it's all right. And it's like. <laughs> that's your Billy accent, huh? That's my Billy accent. Um, And <laughs> so bad. Um, And he's going to be like, oh, it's okay. But I think he's going to come guns a blazing. And if he is in a same predicament as he is in this round and next round and that like he is a possibility of going up his anxiety is going to be even higher. I think what is going to do him a whole lot of help in this game, and he even said it himself, is his mom. And it sounds like she's going to be that sounding board for him. So in this game, maybe versus like the Billy I experienced in my season, he has that foundation. He has that um, grounding person to keep his head leveled. And from what we can see from Grace and what I've seen already, she just seems extremely chill. If she can kind of keep him hunkered down he might be able to get through yeah you mentioned grace being extremely chill it was kind of brought up as something that stacy was mentioning was people that maybe are okay being voted off first and grace was under that category from what stacy was saying maybe mm. not as invested but then we get a scene of grace yeah. saying you know i came from australia to play this game with my son so what did you think of that kind of angle that stacy was playing of you know, maybe Grace isn't invested. Maybe it'll be easy and vote her out. I think it's a really sad cop out, like to even like bring that up. I don't know, like even just off of perceptions, if a mom is coming here with her son, she's not going to just, ah, regardless of like how far she's traveled, she's not like anyone that's here hopefully wants to be here. If someone's outwardly saying like, I don't want to be here, then yeah, sure. Bring that up in a conversation when your name's getting thrown out. But I think at that point, Stacy was grasping at straws. She heard that her name might be out. She or well, I think her explanation was she heard Blake's name out and she didn't hear any of their names, which her interpretation is that her name was being thrown out. And I think at the time it kind of was being tossed a little bit. Right. Um, I don't think that was the right way to push votes off. I don't know. And it sounds like that got back to Grace. And if I was Grace, I wouldn't really too much like that. I don't know. Grace is probably the type of person that is just going to brush it off anyway um, and is not going to let it get to her. But Yeah. I think maybe Stacy watched a couple episodes of Survivor and saw people quitting and was like, maybe that'll happen oh this my season. Oh but... God, I know. Survivor, that's a whole other story. God different damn. game, different game, different time. Yeah. Um, let's move forward into the beginning of the episode. Um, we see a lockbox in the beginning of the episode something to do with marbles i i keep hearing about these marbles and chris g and um i don't really know what that means and i don't know how they solved it but josh and aaron found a lockbox in the pool room and somehow you know spammed the codes and got into it and found a pendant of power mm. josh, josh is on a roll here I, it's, ju it's just you know it's josh i mean what else do you expect right um I think as far as I can gather with the marbles, I think it's Taisha and Eli that got those advantages from uh, the raffle um, that kind of gave them a map. I'm not too sure what the map looks like. I think it, I'm assuming maybe that had something to do with it and maybe marbles, there was maybe like something in between that was supposed to get them to the marbles. But because Josh and it seems like Erin is also very crafty herself, just better at hiding it or not as... Uh, villainize as josh may be in his uh in his prowess but i think that uh it was aaron who was just like flicking through uh until they randomly got the right number they opened it and power to him and I, from at least when we can see in the episode no one even noticed yeah are you surprised yeah. that nobody noticed it seems like everybody noticed when you opened that one box Oh my God, because I, everyone was there. Oh my, that was so silly. Yeah, everyone knew. Everyone was looking for it. Everyone was trying to de-scramble it. And I went up and I really just wanted to see if I knew the code. And I should have, I, in retrospect, I should have just locked it back up, walked away. But 
they had the ability to get it and nobody saw it and that's the way you want it right that was like the beginning to my downfall so for them it's working out great so far no one even knows but if you're in a game with josh you should always assume he has something assume the worst photo mount when he's possible <laughs> yeah no or be on um, his side i don't know one or the other yes it seems like a lot of people this season are taking that route of being on his side at least early on yeah which might be a really smart play on their part or a very bad play if they let it go if they let him go too far but we do he, we, in josh's um reasoning for voting you, you know blaker he is he's going along with the he's going to play a new game a heroic type game Kara, yeah. do you believe that? I don't think it's going to last long. I really appreciate the effort. I do. I think it's awesome to see him trying to be a different Josh. But you can even see in that confessional, he's like itching to like do what he wants to do. And to be honest with you, the way I see it, Josh, play your dirty game. Play it. Do your dirty Josh things. Be your slithery snake. That's what we like to see. Um, it's maybe not the most fun to play with, but even when I was playing with him, I thought it was fun because I wasn't on the receiving end. So it really all depends on perception and perspective, I guess. Um, but yeah, Josh, take out take out your invisible knife. Let's go to war. I want to see it. I have a feeling that's going to be coming up in a couple of episodes. Um, <laughs> I think he he will get bored of the hero arc um, real, real quick. Um, but... Kira, what about this competition? We have this team building competition and some of the, you know, alumni were saying it's different from the past team building competitions. Um, kind of more difficult this time around, would you say? Um, I don't know that it's more difficult. I think it's different. I think like from what I remember of like my season when we did the team building, the buckets especially with the spacing i mean that did have its own difficulty in itself and we even did like a very similar version in the mini um and we had to do what they did in this one where they had to like tie their ties to the string um and then it looks like the plate was just like sitting on top from what i could gather i right. think the blocks themselves are pretty easy because it's not like in survivor where you see them like stacked up really high so those minor movements that you saw the plate making weren't affecting because it was it had a, a pretty strong base um i think the key in that challenge is communication more so than it is in maybe the um t uh, team building competitions that we've seen before where it's like a lot maybe before um it can be inferred okay we have to take this bucket here and we have to bring it there it's pretty straightforward and then we have to stack them up yes communication is needed but a lot of it is also common sense whereas this some of it, some people knew the strategy and were trying to communicate it and it just wasn't getting across. And then you saw on other teams, there was someone communicating and it was getting across. Example, Stacy was trying to communicate to Adam that he literally had two inches of rope and didn't even have to step outside of his square to place his thing. If he let some slack go and it could even out, it wasn't going to be so teeter tottery when they were, and that's why they dropped the first time, right? Um, and then you saw in, I think it was the red team where Chris, he's like, I don't want to be the leader, but I know they need a voice. So he was communicating really well. And you saw, I think Taylor was kind of feeding off of it. that. No, I think that's a different team, but someone was feeding off of it. And, um, I think it helped the team very much and you saw they won. So, and four seconds, how crazy is that? Four seconds between, Four you know, seconds. going to tribe, going to elimination and not going to elimination. That is a bummer. Incredible. Like seconds matter. Seconds matter in this game. Um, you did mention Chris G. I thought he was the star of the competition portion. 100. That team, I think, got a minute and change or a minute and 30 or whatnot and blew yeah. all the other teams out of the water. So I think whatever he did which it seemed like, you know, whoever's going for it, everybody else pull real hard um, and, you know, release your rope. I thought Christy knows exactly what's going on here. Um, but yes, you mentioned four seconds. 
between the, the other two teams. And we see, did you think going into this, that it was going to be similar to your first elimination where two teams were going to be going, or did you think two separate or were you shocked by this format? Yeah, I, um, because of it being geos, I really did think that it was going to be one of two things. It was either going to be two teams going separately and the cat one captain would be in on the vote um for each try or each team and or it was going to be both and so then two people would have gone right one from each uh, losing team or it's the two losing teams combined like it was and then potentially two people going I, I had it in my mind that two people would be going um so to see only one person go is quite exciting it means that we'll have a couple more episodes before a double i'm assuming maybe like not the next episode, but maybe episode three or the, like the third elimination will be a, a double. Um, so, you know, and I think that's better in a game format perspective just because it allows people to create those uh, relationships. So what do you think now with Stacy? Blaker is eliminated from the game. Stacy is now without a duo partner. What does this yeah. next round look for, like for Stacey? Do you think she'll be immune? Do you think, like, how does... How do you think that would work out? I don't, I don't think she's going to be immune. I don't think the game is going to give her any cookies. I think, um, unfortunately, she's going to have to do some damage control because, A, it was her partner. B, she was caught saying things like the um, who really wants to be here type of thing. Um, and, um, you know, she might be able to use like her emotions got to the better of her to her advantage and use that as part of her, um, you know, uh, plea. But I don't think the format of the game is going to give her like an advantage because her person left. I think it's going to be up to her to figure out how she can stay. Yeah, I also agree. I, I, I think she'll be thrown right back into the mix. And I think that it's just it's going to be interesting to see how will she be able to compete for captain? I don't know because, you know, the last, the last um, captain's challenge was, you know, pick the duos. Um, right. So right. It is that popularity contest. Yeah. And what will be interesting to see is come second elimination. If st say it's not Stacy and it's another person that loses their duo, do they now become a duo or once a duo is halved, it's halved. So I yeah. don't know. It will be interesting to find out that side of the format for sure. And we'll have to wait until the next episode to figure that out. Um, I yeah. want to ask you about, there was a little editing going on when Matthew Pop was reading the votes and we got Taisha throwing her vote onto Adam. Did you, when that happened, did you take a step back and be like, this can't be happening. He's I not going to vote it out again. <laughs> Oh, like before they showed Taisha say like, yeah. oh, I just want to throw. I I literally started cackling. I was like, get the fuck out. Um, and like I didn't want it to happen. I, if if Adam was the first boot again, it would it would almost be comical, but so frustrating. Like I would feel like I would be messaging uh, Adam right now, being like, what the actual fuck. Um. <laughs> And so I'm really happy that that didn't happen. Yes, <laughs> um, yes. I think Chaisha is a fucking genius for yes. making that move. I don't think she's going to get caught because it's Taisha. I think it's going to, and we already saw that it's doing exactly what she wants it to do and light a fire under Adam's ass. And <laughs> he is going to go back into this. Like as soon as they walk away from this vote, he's going to be going around to any and everyone and being like, who the fuck wrote my name down? And, uh, She's just going to kind of like be back there, kind of, you know, not me, uh, but I think it's going to be really good for her. She wants it to drive her closer with, drive him closer to her. I, um, and it sounds like she is going to be angling it on the husbands, uh, mainly Matt. Uh, so if they also can find out that Matt is also really pushing Billy and season three can get together just to get Matt out to kind of brush that off and clean that slate. Uh, that might be an avenue that Taisha can can push with them. 
Yeah, I thought it was genius. I thought it was so fun. Her confession, you don't usually get the confessional of the, like, why, why, why is she voting until the very end? So that was yeah. so much fun to, and what a, what a brilliant idea. Cause I think, like you said, I think it's working. Um, it's so good. It's, it's just a testament to Taisha and how she reads the room. Yes. And I do want to, I want to kind of go over some of the people that were at the vote, but didn't seem to get any flack at all. But I want to talk first about Matt and his decision to try to spearhead to get Billy out. <laughs> um, and, and eventually he voted for Billy, but um, didn't have the numbers there. What do you think of that, his decision to do that? Because, you know, he's safe. He is a captain along with, you know, the other three, but he seems to really want to spearhead something when, you know, he's not vulnerable. Do you think that was a smart idea by Matt? I don't, I, I mean, for some people, I think it can really work and it, it depends on your tact and pulling it off. I'm, I wasn't there, so I don't know how it's being pulled off to the rest of them. We'll find more about that next episode, but I don't think it is a good idea. I think, especially if you're captain, you already have a spotlight on you. Um, and if you're trying to drive votes, um, and I think he was really trying in his all of his power to like not have a, or at least not make it seem like he had a driving force in the vote, but he kept kind of being in all the conversations and he kept on bringing up Billy's name and he would say things like, um, well, you know, I heard about, you know, taking out a really big threat or taking out someone that's an easy vote, but I don't know who that is. Well, I, you know, so it, it really depends on how much people buy the BS. Um, I think he might have put himself into some hot water uh, by kind of interjecting himself. Uh, I think maybe if I was in his shoes, I would have played more of how Jim played. Yeah. And Jim was very like, um receptive and wanted to hear everybody out and it was just like you know um it sounded like he wanted to go with where majority was and he wanted to listen to the teams and you know figure out what the best move was from there whereas matt tried to do that at first and then was like "Ooh, someone said billy's name well let me see if i can get people on billy um and i think he maybe just got excited um and uh hopefully he didn't bite the poison apple do you think Matt is going to tell Billy that he voted, like, come clean and say that I voted for you, Billy? Do you think no. he's going to try to lie and not say that he didn't? Yeah, I think he's going to put that big grin from ear to ear on and be like, absolutely not. I would never. Um, and I don't know whether Billy will buy it or not. Who knows if it'll get back to him Uh if it'll get back to Billy that Matt was bringing it up and maybe if Billy's coming into the conversation saying, Hey, I'm hearing X, Y, or Z. Um, I feel like Matt is probably denied till you die type of person. Um, that's just what I'm getting. Um, but maybe he doesn't, I don't know. We'll have to see. If Adam was somebody that voted for Billy, there's no right. way in hell he's saying that he, he telling Billy that he did that. No. Do you no, think, there's no way. Do you think that if Adam um, did vote for Billy, he'll try to blame it on Matt and Jim? Yeah, and I think it's probably smarter to blame it on Matt and Jim, uh, especially Jim, because I think it'll be hard for people to believe that they voted differently, and they're going to be trying to say that they voted differently because they did, but then Matt doesn't want may not want people to know that he voted Billy. And so that's just going to toss up a bunch of um, ambiguity. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's going to get a little messy next episode, It's going to get think. so messy. And that's what, like, this first episode, or that first episode, this first, like, voting episode, um, just had so much going on in it. And, you know, even Grace's name was brought up. And so like how is all of that going to come into play if four names brought up in the first vote is kind of wild um and i think it's going to be exciting to see um how the husbands are gonna do their damage control crazy enough i think aaron and josh get out scot-free everyone probably even forgets that they were captains right 
um, because Jim and Matt were playing it so loud. And, and again, not so much Jim, but Matt was playing pretty loud in that role, which isn't a bad thing um, if you have the right people around you. But as you see um, in each like frame in all the different rooms of who's talking to who, you can see like the common people that are like checking back in with each other. And it seems like there's some solid formations of groups coming together. I do agree with that. You mentioned four people's names being thrown out um, throughout the course of this. There was only four others that could have been thrown out. But I want to talk about those four others that yes. seem to get away um, with, you know, pretty scot free. Um, yeah. Taisha and Eli. Nobody said their names. Were you surprised? I know that going into coming out of you know episode one um people that i was talking to ali people on the draft they said that eli a little worried about eli but it seems like he he looked good this episode to me yeah i think um i think for i don't know very much of eli i only know uh his performance in outlast he was on outlast with taylor um he ended up being like a medevac kind of was like talking about quitting um and I think that was due to the elements. Um, hopefully sure. being in a house uh, suits him a lot better. I think what he's not going to be ready for is there's a whole lot less sleep in Ascendance than there is in all these other games. Like you're in a house, people are up all the time. They're trying to talk to each other, strategize. There may be, who knows, another you know fight in the Coliseum to like four o'clock in the morning. Let's, so let's hope. Let's I'm hope. hoping. Uh, here's <laughs> hoping, right? Um, so... <laughs> Maybe one or two. I wouldn't mind. Um, I'll, I'll take three. <laughs> there you go. Uh, four for season four. Why not? Let's let's double it. <laughs> double or nothing. Um, so I don't know. I think that uh, I lost where I was going a little bit there. But I think that Eli is doing a lot better for himself than I think I was expecting. Um, it'll be really good for him if he can kind of like sit into the background for a couple of rounds, which I think he'll be good at. And I think he has a cushion with Taylor and with uh, Taisha. And Taisha is a super social player. Taylor is a super social player. Both of them have similar ties and also different ties. So I think he's well insulated. Yes, I do too. Um, I'm feeling a lot better about Eli. And obviously we spoke about Taisha. Was not in trouble at all. Throws her vote. Icon. Iconic yeah. queen here. Um, Iconic queen indeed. Who out? Who was the other duo that was in this mess? It was um, Adam and Taylor, right? Adam and Taylor were the other yes. vulnerable cup um to duo. Uh-huh. Obviously, Adam. So happy he was able to get through this first step, this first vote. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously got the the throne vote, but he looked really good. He looked like he, you know, he. Didn't do really anything wrong in season three, but he he looked like he was holding his own. And so was Taylor, right? Yeah. And, you know, um, watching Adam's confessionals, I wish he would stop saying like he's trying to do everything completely different to last season. I don't think he did anything wrong last season, you know, and I think it was just the bad luck of the draw and someone really wanted him out and they made it happen. Um, And unfortunately, a lot of the people that really wanted to work with Adam weren't in on that vote myself included like i remember at the last moment hearing that like adam's name was oh uh, someone came up and said oh i think i heard adam's name is out and i was like adam's name yeah that's not gonna stick little do i know i sit at the vote and adam goes out the fucking door so i don't think he needs to change too much in his game but it sounds like whatever um efforts he is making bigger than he did last season are really helping him i just hope he doesn't harp on the um past experiences too much and just move forward and play your game yeah exactly i don't i i don't think i think in the confessionals he's saying like he kind of wants to you know scrap last season and do something completely new but from what we saw during the actual game portion it seems like he's not overcorrecting or or you know yeah. going off off the script too much so exactly. i'm happy to see that um the other person that I do want to talk about is the other two captains. You know, we we talked about Matt and Jim, but I want to talk about Aaron and Josh um, in terms of the way that this strategy portion went down. I thought they played it perfectly. I thought Josh was just enough, you know, being very um, 
impartial on, you know, not wanting to vote somebody else's do You know, he didn't want to vote somebody's do out, you know, ruin their game or anything. So he was just kind of taking in the information. We didn't see much of Aaron, but it was a lot of the similar stuff uh, that Josh was doing, Aaron was doing. Um, so I think these these guys are playing top notch right now. I think Josh and Aaron are very similar in their style. I think that Josh is more in your face. Aaron is a little kind of like she's sweet um, and nice to your face. But like if she's got it, she seems like she can be cut through it if she needs to be. Um, and I think that like in this round, you know, she's being very open. She's like, uh, oh, I want you know, the teams to decide and, you know, I'll try and figure out where that is, where we're like, I lay in that. Um, but I really don't want it to be a girl, which is nice because it is like heavily male dominated. So it, there were only three, four options for females anyway. Um, I mean, in, in that mix up, it was an even split, but when you look at the, the cast itself, it's not. Um, so it, it, you know, it was nice to see her do that. Um, I worry for her a little bit in just saying those words because I know in these games, once once a girl says something like, I don't want to vote out a girl or something, anyone will find anything to jump on to. And I hope that nobody's like, oh, well, she'll, she'll never vote out a girl. She's trying to do a girl's thing or like blow it way out of proportion. It's happened to me in the past and I know it's happened to many else other, but um, I don't think it's going to be a big thing. All I'm saying is, you know, um, I think she's calculating what she says and i think it's doing really well for her um and again them finding that power together is huge i'm very interested to see if they really do use it together like who's holding it right yes and um because even though they are a duo like one could use it and the other you know i don't know and are they going to tell anyone will one want to tell someone and the other doesn't want to tell anyone it's so that dynamic of like it's one thing to find an idol in front of someone, you know, like um, Josh and Billy did. And then, you know, say, hey, we're going to use this together. And then we see Josh goes and blows it up in front of everybody and tells everybody about it. And then denial, denial. Or they actually use it together and, and you know, like uh, Josh with um, CJ. Taking that same idol, it's given to CJ. CJ gives it to Josh. Josh is able to execute it, right? So, yeah. I don't know. It's going to be really exciting to see if they do divulge that information to anyone, if they keep it amongst themselves, whose idol is it really? Um, yeah. 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 I'm interested to see who actually has possession of it. Um, mm -hmm. Cause I don't think that was, we saw Josh like hold it up. So I, I'm assuming yeah. it's in his possession at that point. Um, but yeah, you know, we did hear that Aaron actually cracked the, the case there with the, right. the code. So yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is through I love the people that are not a part of the vote that are in the conversations, mm -hmm. even, you know, just listening, maybe putting their two cents in. And I saw it twice in this episode. I saw Chris G and I saw Eric McHenry both in conversations when they're not, you know, in the vote. This is something that I think happened in your season. Taylor did this a lot, kind of was just in the room and just yeah. listening and kind of actively listening there. Is that when you're a, when you're vulnerable, right? And you, you're talking to people that are at the vote. Is that something that you don't like or is that something that you don't care about? So I think it's different for everybody. For me personally, I remember, I think... <laughs> I think Sarah from my season, we were talking about this. I think there was one vote and it, it was really only because like I was trying to figure out like who are the numbers, who do I need to be talking to? And I found myself in a room with like one person that's actually voting and four other people that aren't. And I was like, can anyone who's not in this fucking vote just go away? And then they're like, <laughs> walked away. And and then, you know, I went back and I apologized. Said, I'm sorry, but I, I really could not figure out the numbers anymore. Like it, the numbers were not making sense in my head. And so for me, it confuses me. I don't I don't really want other people to be in the conversation. I'm not going to be like targeting them because they were in a conversation. But it, it's it's not helpful for me when I'm trying to figure out who I'm voting for. Um, unless it's like an alliance member or someone who's like giving me information. But if you're just standing there and you're listening 
and sometimes you're interjecting like oh what about this person like are you even in the boat so like for me personally I'm not super big on it but like and even for myself like uh if I'm safe like for the first couple rounds I was safe I stayed out of things I would like walk around and if someone waved me over I would go over but then when it got to a certain point I would step away because I wanted people to at least think that like I was respecting their space and you know I would get little bits of information that I think I needed to know but I also was good at the social aspect of someone who was in that conversation I knew was going to give me the information later uh so it really all depends on the person and how they can sell it I think in the way that Chris did it um it came off in a genuine thing and he even said like none of us are in the vote to Blaker so work your magic do what you got to do um but if you need to talk to us we're here so like that is a very good example of showing how like you can be in the conversation but also like allowing people to talk to who they need to talk to and not like sequestering someone like Blaker who was in a detrimental point in that vote because he inevitably ended up going out. Who's to know if he wasn't in that room? I don't know how long he's in that room talking to those many people for and how, what time frame that happened in the whole scheme of things, but he could have used his time better elsewhere. You spoke about, you know, working his magic and he wasn't able to work all of it to this evening. He was voted out. Mm-hmm. Um, was there anything else Blaker could have done to save himself, do you think? Do you think there was another option that would have worked? Or do you think that he just, Billy was the way out, but he just couldn't rally the troops? I I think Billy wasn't his only way out. I think if he, and this would have been messy on him, but he probably could have leaned and said, hey, guys, like, if we need to vote out Stacy, I, I, I have no problem voting out Stacy. If your name's out there and your partner's name is out there, um, that is probably the best time, and especially on the first vote, the best time and the most excusable time to say, hey, listen, if it's either me or my partner, I'm here to work for you guys. Like, this is what I can do to help. I'm not going to like it, but I'll I'll vote my partner out. I think that is literally the only other thing that he could have done. And that may have not even stuck. Some people may have taken that and been like, uh, if he can jump off on his partner, he's going to jump off and uh, off me in a second. So <clears throat> there wasn't a lot of wiggle room to work in there. Um, and maybe if he talked to Adam and Josh way earlier, because it sounded like that come that got back to Josh and Adam a little later, and it may have been too late to make the turn in the tide. I agree. I think that was the route because we saw a conversation between Josh and Adam in a hallway, and they're like, "Billy's name's out there. I'm okay with doing that." You Are saw you okay Adam's eyes light up. <laughs> so, I think I don't know if Josh has seen had seen season three going into this, but I think that. Once Billy's name started floating out there, whether it was him who started it, I think those two would have been good, influential members to kind of recruit onto that side. And I think maybe that would have been his way out. Um, But I hope to talk to Blaker at some point for an exit interview this week and get that up on the channel as well. But Kira, I want to end this conversation with you with who are you rooting for right now? And who do you think is in the best position to win the game? It's one person has been eliminated. Who's going to win? Man, that is such a hard question. I think there's a lot of people who are in really good positions. Um, I think this is a really interesting season for returnees. I, I really think we may have a returnee winner unless these newbies can get their act together and and band together and go against them um they're gonna run the game a little bit i think especially in these first couple of votes um if i had to pick one person and solely based off of her move in this vote i'm picking taisha all the way i mean she's a queen i regardless i know she's gonna be in you know the top end of this season and uh hopefully she can win it i think she's tactful she's smart she has great connections um, and her, even like having Eli on her side gives her more connections and just her as a person, like that's just coming into the game. And then her as a person being in the game, like I, I think she'll be able to make a lot of stuff work. It just all depends on 
uh, who she rides with and who wants to ride with her long term and if she picks the right avenue. So um, she's got the brains, she's got the bronze, and she's going to get it done, hopefully. So you think it's going to be a returner that that ends up taking the crown. You, you, you like Taisha's hopes. Give me a newbie that you think has the potential to go far. Yeah, uh, a newbie that has the potential to go far. It's funny because I was really thinking that Blaker was doing great. Um, so maybe my vote doesn't say much. Um, so I hope I don't bite any of you in the butt if I'm, you know, the kid. Who are you going to curse? Who are you going to curse? Know. Oh, man. Um, <clears throat> I think Taylor may do really well. Um, again, also very insulated. She's connected to Taisha. She's connected to Eli. She has all these other connections connected to Billy. Um, if she can hold on to those rider dies and they can kind of like pull her through, she has like the social, um, flavor of like, she's not a loud in your face personality, but she is in the conversation. She's active in the conversations. People like her. I don't think people are going to people are going to have to be convinced to vote her. People aren't going to really want to vote her anytime soon. I agree. I think Taylor had a very, very good episode. I'm going to, I'm going to pick um one newbie that I think is going to make it far. And I really enjoyed him this episode. And that is Jim. I thought Jim had a very good episode this episode, even though yeah. him and his husband were not on the same page. I yeah. like the page that Jim was on. Right. Um, And there's something about him that, he knows when to pull back. Obviously, this was a good time to pull back. Mm -hmm. um, but he knows how to communicate and talk to the people that are in the mix and know what's going on, um, despite not having the pre-connections that a lot of these people have. I'm yeah. hoping that he can, him and Matt can get on the same page and start taking some of these returners out because I agree with you, Kara. I think that these guys have a nice... Um, nice footing now in the game i think they have the potential to go far yeah i really like the husband dynamic i think that um they're a great couple in general but i think i even think it's fun that they're not on the same page and i think they're also aware of not being on the same page and they're okay with that which i think is so beautiful because it's like we don't have to be on the same page every time as long as we know we're good and they they can if the cast allows it, let them play two completely different sides and then figure out something once they get somewhere closer in the middle. Um, maybe that's their strategy. I don't know. Or maybe this is just them and who they are and opposites attract. And maybe, you know, Jim's kind of feeling a different type of vibe for his game. And I think this is his first live game period, which is awesome. And if that's true, like hat off to him because I think he's doing a fantastic job, like you said. And then Matt, I think I'm pretty sure Matt's played a few games before. Um, and so this might not be his first rodeo, but he's definitely new to Ascendance. And I think he's very hungry. It sounds like he's done his homework and he really wants to play. And he's excited, which is awesome. I just hope he doesn't get excited too quick, too fast. And like the captainship doesn't go to his head and it doesn't bite him or Jim in the butt. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint, right? Hundred, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Hira, is there anything else that you want to talk about that you found interesting in this episode, or do you think we covered it all here? Um, I'll just flick through my notes really quick. I think we talked about a lot. I think there's like a crazy amount of connections in this game. We talked about it before a, a little bit isolated with the group of people who were in the vote. But, you know, across the board, there are so many different weaving and intertwining connections from previous experiences or just knowing of someone because of the community. Um, so and a very wide range of people's um, experience in playing these games. Uh, so I'm very excited to see what that will show us. Um, oh, what about... Bill, something coming up about Billy saying Rachel's name and she, like before anything oh. even happened. Do you so like, I like they didn't show us Billy actually saying his name, but like, what do you think about that? I don't think that's a good idea for Billy to do. I don't. Um, I I think Rachel will have. Um, Rachel seems to be like a player in this game, and I don't think you want to 
um, cross her early on. I don't know why Billy would do that even before like we knew who was going to eliminations, if that's even true. If but it's if even it is, true. If it is true, I think that's not a good move, Billy. Right. And if it isn't true, it came from Erica, right? Or at least that's what it showed in the episode. Like she's the one that said it. Who knows who told it to Erica or if she heard it first person or what the case is. But if Billy did do that, that's a rookie move. So I'm surprised. Um, B, if Erica is like throwing that out, because it was around the time of them, of her hearing that Billy's name was out there. If she's saying that to kind of like, maybe she wants Billy to be a target um, and she's trying to angle it that way. She wasn't in the vote. So maybe that's her angle. I don't know. Uh, but I thought that was extremely interesting. I, I made sure I wrote that down and I was like, big question mark, what? Um, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. If uh, Billy did do that and now uh, Rachel knows, I can just see Rachel going up to Billy being like, bro, what the heck? Uh, very similar to what Ozzy did to Billy when Billy, or Ozzy heard Billy wrote his name or was saying his name or something or other um, in our season. So um, it, I don't know what will happen there. We'll have to find out. Um, the only other things I have on here is like his name is out. Um, Matt was itching Billy. Yeah, no, I think I think that was pretty much it. I think we've covered covered everything. It's going to be a very interesting season. I'm really excited to see this duo format. I'm actually starting to really enjoy it. Um, we'll see how like this next captain's thing is going to go like you said because if Stacy doesn't have a partner is it going to be a individual captainship who knows who knows but guess what we will have to tune, tune in next um, week to see episode 3 and see exactly what happens with that um, and all the shenanigans that happened this uh, episode too but Kira always a pleasure getting to talk to you we'll have to do it again sometime down the road Indeed. Thank you for having me. This has been great.